Hi and welcome to the channel. In this video I complete the elevator idler lever bracket. So let's see how I go about it. Okay, so having turned this down so it's an interference fit by uh, three hundredths of a millimeter, uh, I'm just going to part this off and then I'll cut a second one and then we'll do the, the other faces uh, to get it so that it's uh, a good thickness to allow for washers and bits. So let's see how we get on with this bit. I've set up the bush in the uh, in the chuck here. I've done my calculations going by the thickness of the stainless steel washers I'm going to put, which are going to be clamped uh, by the levers, uh, which will rub against the bush to, to stop the lateral movement so that the bush doesn't wear into the uh, aluminium side levers. And it needs to be a thickness of slightly less than 1.8 millimeters. So. I'll face this off now. It's set up in the in the chuck so that it uh, should be nice and flat. And uh, check that. Yeah, it's all set. So uh, we'll just do that. Do that cut back. I'm just going to run a little file just to uh, make sure I don't have a sharp edge on the. Uh, Face there, just in case we do get any sort of uh, movement so it doesn't cut. There is one bush ready to fit. One more to go. Okay, so you've seen that I've made up the bushes. Uh, they've got a very slight radius in here uh, from the tool, so for them to sit dead flat I'm going to have to put a very slight radius in here which I'm going to do, use with a deburring tool. Uh, these have been machined now to 11.03 or 11.04 uh, millimeters and the hole here was drilled out uh, 10.9 millimeters and then reamed to 11 with a bore gauge it came out pretty much spot on. So I'm just going to use this deburring tool just go around here a few times just to just to, just to put uh, that chamfer in. So we've got a chamfer now, which should, in theory, accept the uh, the radius at the bottom of that uh, section there that was machined. And now I'm going to warm this up with uh, a hot air gun and. Uh, Hopefully these will either just drop in or just squeeze them in with a vise. I've got put a very slight taper on the front edge here with a file so that they locate and now that I've done that chamfer they've got something to locate just a little bit. So uh, with a little bit of heat uh, they may just drop in uh, but otherwise I'll just use the soft jaws here and press these fully home. Okay then, it's uh, getting up to quite a high temperature. Well, first off I'll just try to drop one in and see if it will drop. Not quite. So, uh, quick juggle. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot, hot, hot. That 
Dobrze. That's one in, fully seated. So I'll, uh, I'll just get the other one done. Right, so you've seen uh, me press fit the bushes into the, my machine block and uh, that gives me now a bearing surface going across of 5.1 millimetres opposed to the 3.2 millimetres that the original aluminium U channel would have given. And that's brass so it'll wear a lot slower than the aluminium will or would have. Uh, to allow for uh, other bits, this whole thing is only 23.6 millimetres wide, so slightly less than an inch, which is 25.4 millimetres. And that's to allow for a pair of stainless steel washers to be in between the arms and the bushes. The idea of that is it should uh, reduce any lateral wear or lateral movement wearing the inside of the arms. And to allow that to work, uh, this has got to be drilled out and reamed to accept a tube fitting over the quarter inch bolt and that will trap these washers against the aluminium arms so that they move with the aluminium arms. The uh, idea of the tube at the moment, the tube which I'm after is 16 gauge so that should in theory be 3 8 of an inch in diameter uh, but I've yet to confirm that. That would give me a reasonable wall thickness to the bush, so quite a lot of uh, chance for wear before we start running into the aluminium. Okay, so I've got the uh, stainless steel pipe here. I just want to check, see what the external diameter is. And, and I'll know got to get through so that is 9.54 millimeters so I can drill that uh, 9.3 I've got a 9.3 drill bit and I'll have to try and borrow a uh, machine ream uh, to ream out the holes so I'll set up and drill and ream and then we'll uh, probably not going to be able to get a ream uh, no, I don't this unusual size to be able to go to that so probably be 9.5 uh, mil reamer and I'll have to just polish and lap off some of the surface on this so it's a good fit in the bush. Drilled this out 9.3 uh, only could get uh, use a ream borrow ream that was uh, 9.5 millimeters so I put this into the lathe and I polished it back using 320 grit, uh, working my way up until I got to 2000 grit. So it's got a reasonable uh, polished surface on there. And then uh, uh, by continuing like that, I managed to get it. So it's actually a nice close tolerance fit all the way through. To mark this up now, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off in a lathe uh, to make sure it's a lovely, uh, flat end uh, already when I did the turning on you know, I cleaned up the very end here on the lathe to make sure that it's smooth and per you know, perpendicular so with it like that there I can scribe a line onto a pipe so I've got a line and I'll use that to uh, to cut this off. Right, so we're just going to turn the face off, make, make this nice and smooth. And that's spot on. There it is together. I've tightened this uh, nut and bolt up to uh, standard torque. It's got the uh, 
makes sense to point it. You say you've got stainless steel washer. What would normally be between the nut and the washer would be one of the idler arms. Same on this side, between the washer and the head of the bolt would be an idler arm. I've just clamped this together at the moment just to make sure everything's working. Nice and smooth like that. No play that I can feel in that direction. And the end float with a feeler gauge here just slips in. You know, nice fit. And that's the, for our, our Imperial friends, that's the uh, four thousandths of an inch or 0 0.104 millimeters. So uh, that was the clearance I was aiming for. So that's a nice fit and hopefully would last a, a good time. So I'm going to take this apart now and uh, I'll degrease all this and I'll paint it uh, with its protective coat. So then here's the finished item. Uh, I'm quite pleased with the, uh, the end result. Uh, is it worth doing? Well, to me, yes. I like to make things which are going to last as long as the aircraft without requiring too much in the way of change. But the standard item would last quite happily. Uh, you might need to replace it part way through the life of the aircraft. Um, it's just an engineering challenge for me to try and make things a little bit pretty and blingy, I suppose. Uh, additional weight, about 15 grams. Uh, additional life, unknown. Time to actually create, two and a quarter hours to, to make it up. So I think it was worth the, the exercise. Hope you enjoyed the video. And in the next video, I will be going on to creating rib jigs. Catch you later. Bye now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.